created by Pablo Gonzalez and CS Prince, the hijacking of Flight 601 starring Johan Rivera, Arif S. Kenton and Monica Lopeda in the lead roles is finally released on Netflix. As the hostess thriller miniseries releases on the streaming platform, we thought this would be the perfect time to discuss the real life references of the series so that you can have the best viewing experience. A spoiler warning is in order as we will be discussing essential plot points and character details from the show. So if you haven't been able to catch up with the series yet, maybe you should pause the video and get back to watching it on Netflix. But if you are done watching it already, kindly follow us through this video. And yeah, while you're at it, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. It helps us a lot. Thank you and let's move on. The basic plot of Netflix's The Hijacking of Flight 601 is based on a true story. However, many events and character names were changed in the series for creative reasons. For example, Aero Bolivar Airlines is based on a real Medellin Airlines called Sam Airlines, which began operating in 1946. The company's headquarters is in Bogota, similar to what we saw in the Netflix series. According to actual events, the Sam HK-1274 plane was hijacked on May 30, 1973 by two air pirates who belonged to a community of Paraguayan immigrants. However, these hijackers did not board the plane in Bogota as presented in the series. Instead, they flew to Perida, the town where these terrorists were coming from. Originally, there were around 84 passengers on board while the Netflix series cut that number in half. As shown in the series, Aero Bolivar headquarters in Bogota received a radio message to this effect shortly after the plane was hijacked. Most likely, these events remain close to reality. However, the entire internal policy of the aeronautics group appears fictitious. In reality, shortly after the hijackers made their first demands, the Colombian government backed down because it did not want to negotiate with the terrorists. Such hijackings are quite common in the country and giving in to the demands of a terrorist means encouraging others to commit such hijackings. Sam Airlines for its part called on a lawyer negotiator Ignacio Mustafa who had literally no experience with terrorists and had never dealt with them in his life. In reality, he led the company's collective bargaining team. In the series, Aero Bolivar's director Pidatek even makes a joke about it during the board meeting if anyone remembers. Later, Pidatek takes on the responsibility of dealing with the kidnappers. Frankly, Pidatek wasn't qualified for the job, which is why his entire negotiation strategy seemed like a farce. Furthermore, I do not believe that the character of Piratek is based on a real person as there is no evidence linking him to real events. Meanwhile, Misal Pastrana's character is actually based on a real Colombian president, but some of the events revolving around him are quite fictional. For example, after Colombian leaders refused to negotiate with the terrorists, they did not stop the airline from negotiating with them. Mustafa arrived in Aruba where the plane had landed together with the general secretary of the SAM to negotiate terms with the terrorists. Mustafa and the Secretary General wanted to board the plane to discuss further, but the hijackers panicked and threatened them not to interfere further. In response, they forced the pilot to fly the plane out of Aruba. However, the Netflix series has made some changes here. First, we saw how Piratek stole money from the company's safe to pay the terrorist and brought a bag full of $50,000 to Aruba. Even though the scene is close to real events, many things have been fictionalized for dramatic reasons. In real life, it was the Aruba government that facilitated a deal between the hijackers and the airline. They demanded that the Sam Airlines pay the terrorist $50,000 and a crew change and that in exchange the hijackers would gladly release the passengers. Fortunately, both parties agreed. However, we never saw a crew change in the hijacking of Flight 601 and the flight crew remained the same from start to finish. Also, the character of Deputy Defense Minister Julio Cesar Esquera is completely fictional. As mentioned earlier, the Colombian government withdrew from the entire process and therefore did not intervene in the cases afterwards. However, to make things even more dramatic, the Netflix series featured Esquera, who began attacking Piratek for making a deal with the terrorists, thus becoming an enemy of the state. It would not be wrong to assert that Esquera's entire involvement in the narrative is entirely fictional for two reasons. First, the Aruba government itself broke the agreement. Second, the kidnappers did not take any hostages with them and therefore no further investigation was ever carried out, including by the Deputy Minister of Defense. Even the Colombian government did not amass an army to blow up the plane and the whole crescendo during the climax seems fictitious. In real life, Samuel Lines crew members convinced the hijackers not to take hostages. In return, the captain cut all communication channels with the air tower and helped the hijackers escape. For the safety of his crew members, he did not inform the authorities of their disappearance. 
The kidnappers then managed to escape, but one of them was eventually arrested, while the other remained at large. The hijacking of HK-1274 remains one of the darkest chapters in the airline's history. It has been a difficult time for airlines like SAM in Colombia to deal with such frequent incidents. As the CD shows, the airline struggled to stay afloat financially. They had to pay off large debts and joined Avianca in 1954 in order to remain operational. They operated for several years until the early 2000s when Synergy Group finally purchased Avianca. After that, Sam's future looked bleak. The airline struggled in the new age market and eventually ceased operations on October 4, 2010. Although the Sky Pirates made history with the hijacking of Sam planes, the airline itself is no longer part of the real world. If you expected the hijacking of Flight 601 to be just about violence and action, you might be shocked as the series provides much more. Aside from the thrilling hijacking plot, the series provides an engaging depiction of the passengers and crew's traumatic journey. Monica Lopeda's captivating performance elevates the series. During times of difficulty, Ariel Ma's character emerges as altruistic and compassionate, valuing the passengers' safety and well-being over her own. The portrayal of Ulysses is nuanced and multifaceted as well, skillfully portrayed by actor Valentin Valafne. What distinguishes the series with the rest is its attention to the human side of the story. In addition to the compelling hijacking plot, the series dives deeply into the characters' personal lives, revealing their anxieties, aspirations, and the enduring relationships of friendship that grow in the face of tragedy. The series does a good job of depicting the historical setting of the hijacking, delving into the political and socio-economical situation of Colombia in 1973. This gives viewers a better picture of the circumstances that led to the hijacking. These episodes of human connection lend complexity to the story, lifting it above a simple recital of historical events. Despite several scenes that may temporarily relieve stress, the series eventually builds to an astonishing conclusion in which some passengers are finally assured of their safety. Overall, the hijacking of Flight 601 is a compelling watch. Hey hey hey, thank you for watching this video. Do share your thoughts in the comment section about your experience of watching the hijacking of Flight 601 on Netflix. Hit the like button and subscribe to your channel to get your weekly dose of cinnamon series. See you at the next one and for the timing, we're signing off. Adios and I'll be back.